Huge embarrassment for Boeing. Huge concern for the Boeing Starliner program's future. The crew of Boeing's Starliner still has no return date from the International Space Station. And there is increasing chatter that the two astronauts might be brought back on a SpaceX Dragon. While this might be seen as a win for SpaceX, it would certainly be a blow for human spaceflight. I think people have forgotten a lot of the lessons that we have learned over the years and decades about why we need multiple means of transportation for crew to and from space. If you want the background on Boeing Starliner's situation, I did a video not long ago about the situation that Boeing is finding itself in with its malfunctioning Starliner and all of the checks that they are doing to make sure it is safe for the two astronauts on board ISS to return to Earth on the ride that they arrived to the ISS on. The word stranded gets thrown around. Actually, there's a lot of misinformation that gets thrown around these days about this topic. They are not stranded. They have never been stranded because there are two additional vehicles on the ISS that could take those astronauts back down to Earth, that being the SpaceX Dragon and the Russian Soyuz. Additionally, Boeing and NASA have already said that Starliner could return the astronauts in an emergency situation. That said, it's not looking good for the Starliner situation. What was initially thought to be just over a week long mission has now extended over 50 days. And today we learned that while they don't have a date for return, it won't be until August at the earliest. Huge embarrassment for Boeing, huge concern for the Boeing Starliner program's future. There was a thought that was thrown around today that if NASA decides to return those astronauts on a SpaceX Dragon, that that would be the end of the Starliner program. I don't necessarily agree with that. No one is saying that, no one on the Boeing side, no one on the NASA side. I think that they will stick it out a little while longer. And in that previous video I did, I talked about the pros and cons of Boeing continuing with the program and what the options are for NASA. Since then, we are getting hints that NASA is considering alternatives to Starliner to return those astronauts to Earth. Today in the press briefing, they did mention SpaceX Dragon in passing as one of the contingency plans. The beauty of having Dragon and Starliner and two different diverse space transportation systems is we can we can kind of use those as backups. Someday Starliner could be a backup to to a Dragon mission. And, and we've looked at all kinds of different contingencies for that. Uh, you've seen the, the Russians send up an empty um, an empty Soyuz, right, to return a crew when they had a coolant leak. So I think that the beauty of what we have in commercial crew is two different systems. And we, we would employ those systems if we need to. On July 15th, NASA awarded SpaceX a contract called a Special Study for Emergency Response, a small study, $266,000. If you remember a time a couple of years ago when Frank Rubio was stuck on the ISS, NASA awarded a similar contract to SpaceX to look to see whether Frank Rubio could return on SpaceX even though he did not arrive to the ISS on SpaceX. Even though NASA denies this most recent study from July 15th is in any way connected to Starliner, we all know that it is, which again would be a huge win for SpaceX. It would be a huge blow, even more of a blow for Boeing, but it would not be good for human spaceflight. Despite all the work that has been done over the decades to develop human spaceflight, we still lack the transportation to do something as basic as send people to low Earth orbit and return them back to Earth reliably. Right now, even the future of launching crew on Dragon is uncertain because right now SpaceX is awaiting FAA approval to return to flight with Falcon 9 after its mishap and they have not gotten that approval yet. They're going to start out with Starlink, of course. They're going to start out with an uncrewed mission. NASA is going to need to see proof that Falcon is ready to fly with crew on board before they allow SpaceX to fly their astronauts on Crew 9. So at this point, there's even an uncertain future about launching crew on American transportation. And that is not where we wanted to be back in 2014 when NASA awarded both SpaceX and Boeing those contracts for the commercial crew program. If you remember back in 2011, after the space shuttle retired, there was no means for Americans to fly to the International Space Station on an American vehicle. We relied solely on the Russians to carry astronauts to the ISS. Same thing after the Columbia incident with Space Shuttle, two and a half years it took for return to flight after Columbia. And in the meantime, all of the expeditions to the ISS were on Soyuz. Relations with Russia and the United States right now are not great. And NASA does not want to be in a position where it needs to rely in any way on the Russians to transport Americans to the ISS with the exception of the crew exchange program, which has not been interrupted. That is still ongoing. What what are the alternatives to getting to the ISS? Well, not Orion. At one point, Orion was conceived to bring astronauts to 
the International Space Station to LEO. That is no longer in its design. I don't know if it could be redesigned or, or retrofitted to bring astronauts to the International Space Station, but I don't think it can at this point. And currently, Orion is going through its own problems with its performance during Artemis 1. It needs to have some design changes, some corrections in place before they put people on board it for Artemis 2. Sierra Space, back in the day, Sierra Nevada Corporation, 10 years ago, was in the running for Dream Chaser to be part of the commercial crew program. They did not get that contract, ultimately. We might actually see it fly by the end of this year. I am hopeful that we will see it fly hopefully either the end of this year or early next year. It's supposed to fly on a ULA Vulcan, but that's an uncrewed Dream Chaser. We need to see Dream Chaser fly with cargo for a while before they put crew on board. Right now, Sierra Space isn't even putting a target date for when it's going to fly crew on Dream Chaser. We have New Glenn. New Glenn currently is scheduled to fly by the end of this year. Again, uncrewed, its first mission. We don't have Blue Origin publicly stating that New Glenn will carry astronauts, but we know internally they are working on a crew capsule to put on top of New Glenn, which is very logical, right? Because they already have New Shepard, which flies crew to suborbital space. It flies passengers to suborbital space. But we don't have any dates for that either. So what else? What about government? The only governments that have the independent ability to launch astronauts aside from the United States would be Russia and China. We talked about Russia. China is also a huge adversary to the U.S. government. There's pretty much no chance that NASA astronauts will get a ride with China. India is currently working on a capability to fly its own astronauts to space. They have not done so yet. They're going to fly their own astronauts. They're going to fly Indians to space before where they go ahead and partner with anyone else to fly anyone else to space. Choices are very slim right now. I don't know how many of you remember this, but at the end of 2019, there was worry that the ISS was going to be understaffed because of the lack of transportation to ISS. Boeing Starliner was not operational. SpaceX Crew Dragon was not yet operational. At the end of 2019, Russia decided that it was going to do only one flight of the crew exchange program starting in April of 2020. Thankfully, SpaceX started flying astronauts in May of 2020. So we didn't have to run into this problem. But I definitely remember I, I gave a quote to a new scientist about the fact that because we were so reliant on the Russians, we were reliant on their schedule on whatever they decided to charge NASA on the very running the very, you know, the, the maintenance and operations of the ISS. And that is not a position that NASA wants to be in ever again. And really, if we are going to be a spacefaring civilization, we need multiple means of transportation to space as successful and inspired as SpaceX's achievements are, we cannot rely on just SpaceX. We need multiple carriers. We need multiple spaceflight providers. If not Boeing Starliner, then we need others to come in and offer those alternatives when they are needed. So I'm rooting for Boeing Starliner. In that video I did a few weeks back, I stated that I don't think that they are commercially competitive. Now I know that no, they are definitely not commercially competitive. No one outside of NASA is going to buy a Starliner flight. However, NASA needs them. NASA needs them for the ISS. And who knows what's going to happen in the future with commercial space stations. So I'm really wishing Starliner the best of luck. I hope that they can come home in August and I hope that the first full Starliner mission, Starliner 1, isn't too delayed.